everyone, this is Crochet with Chris. Um, today's tutorial is going to be a little awkward as far as setup and lighting, but I think you're going to find it very valuable if you want to spruce up your round ripples a little bit or make them into something a little different. Um, the reason the lighting is a little darker today is because the project that I'm working on that requires this type of surface crochet has red in it, and red, as we all know, is absolutely terrible for showing up in lighted environments. It gets very bright and very hard to see. So I'm trying to use some natural lighting here and deal with the shadowing that I'm getting. And because it's an afghan, I needed to lay it out. So even harder to see. So, <laughs> so it's a little bit of a challenge for the tutorial today. Um, what I'm making is a Spider-Man inspired colored round ripple. Um, it is going to be a Christmas present, so I'm very excited. But what I wanted to do was give it the effect of actually being a web. Now what I've done is I crocheted the round ripple as I normally would and ev intermittently I put in a row, a single crochet row of black. So now I'm going back and I'm actually creating this surfaced crocheted line back to the center and it goes all the way out to the point. So that's what today's tutorial is going to show you is how to crochet this spine down a round ripple afghan. So in order to do, let me slide this over, the round ripple, it's a little better up here, or to do the surface crochet, you start at the peak. This is, you know, the peak, not the valley. The valley I'm actually leaving blank, so it'll get more of that swoop effect to make it look more like a spider web. Now I stopped, I'm going to do one more row of black to the afghan. So you can see I started the surface crochet before I did that last row of single crochet. So always, always, always a lot for that last color. Do not do the whole row or the whole afghan before you do this because then your end's going to look a little lumpy. All right. So now I'm, I've picked up my next spine or my next peak and it does not have the surface crochet. And what we're going to do. Oops, what I'm doing is I'm creating the slip knot and putting my crochet hook in. If you do not know how to do a slip knot, I have videos on that as well. Um, to do this surface crochet, you need to know how to do a chain stitch and a slip stitch. That's it. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to first hook into that chain two space at the top of the peak or whatever your chain space is. I don't know. I guess it would depend on which pattern you use. I am hooking my yarn in and I'm going to slip stitch to hook it on. Oops, maybe. The setup is a lot different than what I'm used to, so please do bear with me. It's not this hard normally. <laughs> Let me zoom out a little bit here. adjusting the camera. Sorry about that. I had to use the end of my couch because I need to lay the afghan out and I couldn't do this at the table so I've kind of... <laughs> afghans are hard to work on on camera. Alright, so I've got... I slip stitch my yarn on, on. So now you got to do this, you need to look at the row. You see I have a double row of double crochet, double crochet, double crochet, single. Everything in this afghan is double crochet except the black row. The black row is single crochet. So what I need to do, for every row that I'm accommodating that is double crochet, so from the start to the next chain two, that's a row of double crochet, I'm going to chain two. Because I'm doing this because my chain two equals the same height as my double crochet. Now, it may be three for you. If it is, like if your double crochets are a little taller because you crochet looser, chain three instead of two. If you don't accommodate your chain size to the stitch that you're working through or working against, your, your round ripple will pucker. If your chains are too, you have too many chains and it's longer than the stitch that you're accommodating for, then you're going to have this bubble. So it's kind of important that you are at least aware of your gauge and what you can do as far as sizing those stitches. So the first thing now, oh, try to get that tail out of the way. I'm going to chain two because my first row is double crochet. And I will say starting is the hardest part. 
because it's really flimsy up here. So now I'm going to, I'm holding my yarn out to the piece. I'm putting my hook under into that next chain two space. Now I'm making sure that this yarn is center to the stitch. I have two double crochets on each side in the chain, so I want to make sure that's in the middle. I'm going to yarn over, pull it through, and do a full single or a full slip stitch. And again, that first start, the starting is the hardest. So now you should have just a little bar. Now my next row is not black. I'm accommodating between here and here, which is another double, cro another double crochet. So I'm chaining two. And then I'm going to go into the next chain two space. Make sure this yarn is feeding into it is center. Slip stitch all it to the chain two. Pull it a little snug. And you see the, the line is being built. The further we get in away from this peak, the less flimsy the afghan becomes and it's easier to work with. Now I'm working between these two chain two spaces, which is another double crochet. So I'm chaining two. Make sure your chains are not too tight because you definitely don't want to buckle. And then go put your hook into the next chain two space. Make sure this is center. Yarn over, pull through. Yarn, pull all the way through to make a slip stitch. Let's see if we can see that. This is starting to build. Okay. Now my next row between these two is my black row, you see between my fingers. So that's only going to be a chain one because my chain one equates the size of a single crochet, which is this row. And I'm going to go ahead and go into the next chain two. Oops. Again, make sure this yarn is center. Yarn over and pull it through to make a slip stitch. And we've gone through the black row. Now you can see I have 12 rows to go with a chain two. So let's do a few of those. I'm doing my chain two, slip stitching, pull it through, done. You're going to notice that now that I'm working away from the peak, I'm not handling the afghan as much. And this is to make sure that my chain twos aren't dreadfully tight. See, I'm just pretty much working the hook and the loose yarn now. Move that down. I'm just going to slip stitch to join them together. Chain two. Of course, the motorcycle goes by when I do the tutorial. Because that's the story of my life, right? <laughs> All right, see, I am just keep moving my way down. Pull my hook out. I just keep going here. Chain two. Slip stitch into the next chain two. Now you're going to notice that as I go, I'll show you. Now we're moving into the red, so it might be a little harder to see. I'm doing my chain two. When I put my hook under, I pass my hook in front of this loose yarn. Then I move that yarn towards the front of the hook. And then I yarn over and pull it through. And then everything, as it comes up and under, it's actually coming up in front of the black chain. And that's just, you could do it on the other side, but I have found, it, I have found that it is a lot easier to do it that way. So I do my chain two. My hook goes into the chain two in front of the yarn. I move the yarn forward, and that's where I pick it up. Because what happens if you don't do that, your hook is, and your yarn are going to come up behind the chain, and it gets really tangled very easily. Um, it's not overly fun to work with. So this is just how I pass the yarn. I mean, you may like the other way, but I will say whichever way you do it, Make sure you do it consistently down the spine. Otherwise, it's going to look lumpy. It won't look right. So I'm still doing my chain two and increase or inserting into those chain two spaces, just working my way down the spine. Continuing to do that. 
As you see, I'm approaching after I do this one. Drop my hook. I'm now ready to do a black row, so it's just a chain one because that's my single crochet row. If you don't have any single crochet rows, then you don't need to worry about it. Um, treble crochets, of course, are going to mean you're going to need to be doing a chain three or maybe a four, depending on how big or how loose you crochet. It just goes right on down. And you shouldn't have any puckering. I say the first part might be a little, when you're getting started on the peak, maybe a little frustrating because it's a little floppy. It also may be the first time you're doing this. It's much like single crochet, or reverse single crochet. As you move through it, it becomes easier. It becomes more natural feeling to do it. Because I'll tell you, it feels kind of odd sometimes to be working through such, you know, like the full thickness of an afghan. You see I've got to another black row, so just a chain one. And you'll find that you just move through it really quickly. It only takes me 10 minutes or so. Now I will say I'm approaching the middle, so my chain ones are going to get a little more frequent. <laughs> we don't have to do this whole spine, but I wanted to point out before I quit, or I turn the video off, not that I quit, I have several more spines to go here, um, that when you finish, you either, you know, when you're done with the spine, you either want to finish in the center or finish it off on a row that's the same color as the spine. If there are no rows that are the same color as the spine, then I would highly suggest you go all the way to the middle, tie, you know, your spine off, and then um, weave in the tails. Or you can finish, like I could finish it right here and it would look okay because I finished on a black row. It's not going to bleed into the next color. But that is how I surface crochet down the spines of a round rip. So that's what we just did. Mm -hmm.